What's going on everyone? Today we're going to be looking at a macro for the Warlock's Eldritch Smite ability out of Xanathar's Guide for Everything using the Roll20 Virtual Tabletop. So let's take a look at this macro and what it does. The first part is a query asking whether you critically hit because this macro is either going to be placed as its own weapon attack or it's going to be used as a global damage modifier and thus, since it is not part of the weapon attack, it will not know whether your attack was a crit or not. You need to tell it. So the first branch is going to say, no, I did not critically hit. In which case the spell will do its 1d8 damage plus, and then this convoluted mess is a big fancy way of saying the level of your character divided by two rounded up. And that's how you know what level your warlock spell level is. It's the level of your class divided by two rounded up and that's your spell slot level except warlocks cap out at spell level five. So the next chunk is to say level five and then keep the lowest one. So between the number five or whatever your level divided by two rounded up is, it's going to keep the lowest of those two numbers and then roll that many d8s. And that's what the spell does. It's one d8 plus whatever the spell slot you've expended is, but unlike paladins where you can pick what level spell slot you are burning, warlocks have the same level spell slots across the board and you only get to burn that choice. Moving down to the yes branch, we can see that we just doubled the math. We'll do 2d8 and the big fancy number plus it's the second iteration of that big fancy number because it was easier to simply add another version of it than to set another set of brackets and multiply by two. So now that we know what this macro does, let's look at how to implement it. The first method we're going to use is by using a global damage modifier. We're gonna to go to the gear on the upper right hand corner of our character sheet and click. In the right hand column, we're going to show global damage modifier field and then click on core to return back to our character sheet. Down at the bottom in the attacks and spellcasting section, a new section for global damage modifiers has appeared. And we're going to name it Eldritch Smite. In the damage field, we're going to paste our macro. And then we don't need to put anything in critical damage because that has already been included in the macro. Finally, we're going to set our damage type to be force. Now, whenever you're attacking with your packed weapon, if you select the blue check mark, the macro will automatically start the query. Hitting submit will run the numbers. Mousing over the dice in the chat box will show that it is rolled 1d8 plus the 3d8 from our spell slot level. This character is level five because you must be level five to gain this ability. 5 divided by 2 is 2.5, rounded up is 3, so a warlock at 5th level has 3rd level spell slots. But let's look at another way to do this. Disable the global damage modifier, click the plus sign to add a new ability, assign the name as Eldritch Smite, disable the attack field, in damage, paste star macro. Set the ability score to be blank. Set the damage type to be force. Set the description to say may not targets huge or smaller prone. Then click on the gear to close. Now, once you've made a successful attack, which does not include the macro, you may opt to use your Eldritch Smite ability, which will begin the query. Now we can see it reminds us that we may knock the target prone. Rolls 1d8 plus 3d8 for our character level. Let's run it again to test our critical hits. Now you can see the macro is running 2d8 plus 3d8 for the spell slot level plus 3d8 for the spell slot level. 
Finally, let's test leveling up our character. We'll set our character level to 15. A level 15 warlock should have spell slots at level 5. So this should roll 5d8 plus 1d8. Mousing over shows it rolls 5d8 plus an additional 1d8. And that's all there is to it. If you need help implementing this macro into your game or you're looking to modify it somehow, leave a comment down below and let me know what you need and I will assist however I'm able. If you're looking for a macro for a different ability or have an idea for a future video, I'd love to see those comments as well. And once again, anything I can do to help, I will. And we're going to end with a big thank you to Roll20 for including me in the Roll20 Spotlight program. It not only helps people find my channel and content, but it does give me a Roll20 Pro subscription, which I use to unlock additional features and goodies for my games, as well as these tutorial videos. So once again, big thank you to Roll20, but also a big thank you to everyone who's watched this video. Hope to catch y'all in the next one.